Our next speaker will be Eric Maloney from uh, CSU. Yeah, Eric also gave a talk at the colloquium. Thanks for that, Eric. So whenever you're ready, um, you can start. Do you uh, see my screen? Yeah, it's not full okay. screen yet. But... How about that? Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so um, thank you very much, um, Anish and Yudith for the um, invitation to give a talk here. So what I'm gonna be talking about here is um, uh, the topic of the MJO and climate change. And so I'm gonna summarize um, some of our recent work that tries to get at thinking about not only how the MJO in the tropics is going to change in a future warmer climate, but also teleconnections associated with the MJO. So I don't think I have to um, introduce the MJO because I think that most people here know what it is. I always like to show this animation from Adrian Matthews, um, especially um, as an introductory slide to give a sense for what the MJO is. Um, you know, very nice animation showing its eastward propagation from the Indian Ocean into the Western Pacific. And also, as uh, most of you know, the MJO has um, teleconnections to other parts of the globe. And so it's very important for modulating, you know, various aspects of climate and weather. So one thing that we've been talking about here today is the impact of the MJO on teleconnections to places like the U.S. West Coast and the NAO, as Frederick talked about. Um, but the MGAO also has teleconnections to other parts of the tropics as well. So one thing that I might talk about if I have time at the end of this talk is the fact that the MGAO um, you know, modulates tropical cyclones and that modulation might actually change also um, in a future warmer climate. So I'm gonna rev be reviewing here um, a few papers and I wanted to show the references here um, before I went on any further, just so you have these afterwards. So I'm g'll talk about a couple of papers which use CMIP5 models under RCP 8.5 to talk about future MJO changes in these models. Another thing that I'm gonna talk about is whether we could see any changes to the MJO in the reanalysis record. So this is a paper by um, one of my graduate students with Elizabeth Barnes that looked at various reanalysis products and detected MJO changes in those. And then if I have time, I'll talk about how um, the East Pacific MJO tropical cyclone connection might change in a future warmer climate. So, so these four papers here, just I'll touch on aspects of them in this talk. So first of all, let me set the stage. And so um, this plot here shows changes in tropical mean specific humidity and dry static energy profiles at the end of the 21st century in RCP 8.5 um, you know, forced um, you know, model simulations. Um, blue here is the change in the vertical structure of specific humidity from at 2100 basically relative to today. And the red here shows the change in dry static energy profile um, over the warm pool. Um, the first thing that I wanna point out here is that the um, specific humidity profile tends to strengthen um, in a future warmer climate. So, so people think that this affects the MJO um, by increasing the amount of vertical moisture advection that you get per unit MJO heating anomaly. So if you have a heating anomaly associated with the MJO that produces upward motion, if you strengthen the vertical moisture gradient, that would be expected to, to strengthen um, you know, vertical moisture advection and, and maintain the MJO. So that's one thing here. Um, the other thing that you see here is that there's actually a, an increase in the vertical dry static energy profile in a future warmer climate in the tropics. This is associated with a preferential increase in temperature in the upper troposphere relative to the lower troposphere. And this increases the static stability of the tropics under climate change. And um, if you were at my talk a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the dominant thermodynamic energy scaling of the tropical atmosphere where you have um, adiabatic cooling on the left side um, balanced by diabatic heating on the right side. And if you reorganize it, you can see that the ratio of um, you know, vertical motion to precipitation should be approximately proportional to the inverse of static stability. So, 
So this would actually predict um, for MJO time scale disturbances that if the static stability of the tropics goes up, that would actually weaken um, the MJO circulation per unit MJO precipitation anomaly. So we'll see if that actually bears out in uh, CMIP-5 simulations. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, look at um, multi-model mean and variability for actually eight different um, CMIP-5 simulations that have been assessed to produce good MJO um, in current climate. So I'm going to show, first of all, a bunch of essentially variance plots um, showing on the upper left here where MJO precipitation in the historical simulations um, in the multi-model mean is high. So you can see that over the Indo-Pacific warm pool, you tend to get high MJO precipitation variability. Um, similarly, over the historical period, you see um, high MJO omega variability over this same region. And then the difference at the end of the 21st century relative to today is shown on the bottom two panels. So one broad thing that you could see here is that across the tropics, MJO precipitation variance generally goes up in um, the, the multi-model mean in RCP 8.5. And, and this is consistent with the very simple argument I told you before about you know, increases in the vertical moisture gradient in the tropics. But then the other interesting thing that you could see here is that generally um, variance associated with MJO circulation tends to go down in the multi-model mean. So that's also generally consistent with that argument I made before about static stability. Um, so again, this is the multi-model mean and, and this is the end of the 21st century. Um, one question is, you know, when do these sorts of signals actually become detectable and at, one, at what point in the future. So I'm going to show that in this particular slide here. So the first thing that I'm going to show here is the change in MJO precipitation amplitude over the warm pool as a function of decades into the future. So you can see here the colors start at 21, 2021 to 2040 and then they go to the end of the 21st century in reddish colors. And this plot here is the change in MJO precipitation amplitude. Um, the line in here indicates the multi-model spread across different models. So one thing that I wanted to point out here is that um, while you can actually see a detectable change in MJO precipitation amplitude at the end of the 21st century that exceeds the multi-model spread, you don't actually see that earlier in the 21st century. And the signal is, is you know, well embedded within the multi-model spread. So MJO precipitation changes, at least by this metric, are not detectable until the very end of the 21st century. We'd look at similar changes to MJO circulation um, anomalies, and you see something very similar. Um, you cannot see a signal emerging from the multi-model spread until the end of the 21st century. And then what it indicates is a decrease in MJO precipitation amplitude um, once you get to 2081 to 2100. So there's a change actually in the um, you know, ratio of MJO wind to precipitation that's actually um, suggested by this plot. And we could actually explicitly look at this. And so this is the change in the ratio. Um, and, and in this case, it's actually calculated first within individual models between um, MJO wind and precipitation. And what you could see is that even in the early part of the record, 2021 to 2040, there's actually a detectable change in the ratio of MJO wind to precipitation, such as wind anomalies go down per unit MJO precipitation change. And then this change is very, very robust once you get to the end of the 21st century. So one question, I guess, is, um, well, before I, before I talk about that, let me um, um, look at this a little bit more. So I made some arguments before about you know, the expectation from increases in tropical static stability that you would actually get this reduction in MJO wind, wind amplitude per unit precipitation. And that actually bears out. So on the y-axis of this plot, shows the percentage change of MJO circulation relative to precipitation. Um, and the multi-model mean is the dot and then the spread across different ensemble members of the you know, CMIP-5 ensemble is shown in brackets. 
And then on the bottom axis here is the change in inverse static stability. So you can see that you know, by 2080 to 2100, there's about a 20% decrease in the amplitude of MGL wind anomalies relative to precipitation. And this is predicted actually very nicely by the increase in static stability of the tropics that you can see on the x-axis. Very, very good agreement here. Um, some models get pushed out to 2300 and you know in those models under RCP 8.5 there's actually huge you know decreases of like 30 to 40 percent of you know MJO wind amplitude relative to precipitation so so some of this gets pretty extreme as you get further out into the future so now I guess the question is can we actually see any evidence for changes such as this in the observational record and we actually looked at a couple of reanalysis products. Um, my student Wei Ting Show looked at this. And this is era five, Mera two, and then the 20th century um, you know, era on the right-hand side. And on the y-axis shows the ratio of omega 400 to precipitation and the percent change here relative to a base period. On the x-axis shows the percentage change in inverse static stability. Um, and so you can see here that in all of these analyses, especially if you look at the endpoints, um, yeah, I have to close my little window here. Um, you could actually see that um, from the beginning of the record, in this case for ARA 20 c which is 1910, to the end of the record, you see both a decrease in the amplitude of MGO wind precipitation anomalies and a um, decrease in the inverse static stability of the models. And so what we see in CMIP-5 um, seems to be showing up, at least in some measures, in the observational record. Um, again, there's a lot of caveats here. We're using reanalysis precipitation to, to look at this, which you know, might be considered suspect. But um, um, there's you know, some evidence that what we see in the climate models is actually showing up observationally. Um, some of the you know, um, plots here take weird turns, like Mara you know, takes sort of this uh, you know, left-hand turn to actually get to the endpoint here. Um, Mara 2 actually has structural changes to um, you know, diabetic heating that you know, ha actually um, you know, also affect um, you know, the, the, the results that you actually show here that have to be taken into consideration. And I'd be happy to talk with um, you know, that about, you know, about that with other people afterwards. Okay, um, how much time do I have left, Anish? About, About yeah, three minutes. Three minutes or so. Okay, okay so the question is, um, you know, do these, you know, does this weakening of the MJO circulation that we see in CMIP-5 models, um, at least per unit precipitation, actually affect MJO teleconnections? And, and the answer is that it's complicated. I showed this slide in my um, colloquium talk. Um, some models like the NCAR SPCESM do show a weakening in MJO teleconnections um, in a future warmer climate. And so this is four times CO2 on the bottom, current climate on the top, one particular phase of the MJO's teleconnection. And you could actually see that um, the teleconnection in the North Pacific and over North America is actually weaker in four times CO2 world relative to pre-industrial. We looked at the reasons why in this study and actually did show that it was associated with weakening of the MGO circulation in the tropics and um, weakening ability for that to force a Rossby wave source that you know, caused a teleconnection in middle latitudes. But the complication comes in in that the basic state is also changing. So while the MJO circulation itself might be changing, you also have to think about from the context of teleconnections, how that's actually interacting with changes in the basic state. And, and one thing that CMIP-5 and CMIP-6 models show is that the um, North Pacific jet is likely to extend further east in a future warmer climate. And there was this really nice study, uh, Joe et al here, 2020, that show that one of the effects of this extended Eastern Pacific jet is actually to create a stronger impact of MJO teleconnections on California, regardless of whether or not the MJO teleconnection might be stronger or weaker or not, simply because the teleconnection pattern is shifted further east. So that's a lesson that 
you know, when thinking about MJO teleconnections, it's not only MJO changes that are important, but also basic state changes that are important as well. And one last thing that I wanna think about here is teleconnections to other parts of the tropics. So one thing that the MGO does, it affects um, precipitation over the Eastern Pacific warm pool during boreal summer. And this shows an example of a composite showing that when precipitation south of Mexico is enhanced with the MGO, there's westerly wind anomalies. Um, so we looked at this in CMIP-5 models and we actually showed that the teleconnection of the MJO to the Eastern Pacific is actually weakened in a future warmer climate. And this is partially due to this weakening of the MJO circulation that I talked about before when I was using thermodynamic energy balance arguments. And one consequence of this that you know my former postdoc Heen and I looked at, and this paper is in press right now, is that if you weaken MJO teleconnections to the Eastern Pacific, you actually weaken um, the effect on things like genesis potential anomalies associated with the MJO. So this might actually weaken the influence of the MJO on cyclones near the coast of Mexico, and this might actually weaken the ability on subseasonal timescales to actually predict um, these phenomena in a future warmer climate. A lot of you know, um, you know, work has to be done on this, but it's very suggestive. Okay, so um, just to wrap up, um, in CMIP-5 models, we showed reductions in the strength of the MJO circulation relative to precipitation that are detectable as, as, re as soon as 2020 to 2040 in CMIP-5 models. Individual changes in MJO precipitation or wind are not detectable, but the combination as far as the ratio is. We showed that we can detect some of these changes already in reanalysis to the extent that we can actually believe reanalysis precipitation back to 1910, for example, um, you know, big caveat there. Um, and then the other thing that um, we showed is that, you know, there's not a straightforward connection between MJO wind changes in the tropics and teleconnections. You really have to think about how basic state changes also uh, mediate the strength of teleconnections. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done there um, in you know, future climate model projections to think a little bit more about that. So with that, um, thank you very much for listening and uh, I'll wrap up. Appreciate your, appreciate your time. Great, thanks Eric. Yeah, there's a lot to think about, especially about the future changes. So if there are any questions, please post it on chat. Yaklin, I see you have a question on the chat. Please unmute yourself and ask. Thank you so much for the great talk. Um, so I do have a comment and a question. The comment is based on, I guess, the previous talks. Uh, most of these talks emphasize the role of getting the models to reproduce what we observe, meaning that models are not doing well, especially in the tropics because of the precipitation and ARC interaction biases. So that's kind of worrisome. And I would like, uh, I guess it will be good if you can comment on like, to what degree we can trust on these models that are, you know, like um, trying to assess uh, the changes in the climate due to global warming. And so my a specific question goes to like, you show that you see um, changes in precipitation as precipitation increases, but the circulation slows down. So I was wondering, do we, do you see more frequent but weaker MJO events, or do you see fewer but strong MJO events? How can you, how can we explain that change in precipitation and uh, the atmospheric cir circulation associated with MJO events? Yeah, yeah, I'm very, thank you for your question. Very good ones. Um, so I agree with you that there are many things lacking as far as um, MGO simulations um, in climate models in the current climate. We tried to mitigate that a little bit. Um, you know, for example, in, in this particular analysis here, we actually um, did a you know diagnostic analysis of 
um, you know, climate models in, in current climate and only selected the models that produced a reasonable simulation of the MJO in current climate before we looked at them for future projections. And so, um, you know, while there might still be, um, you know, substantial problems in some of these models, um, we, we, we did try to pre-select the ones that, you know, did better jobs, you know, versus others. And so that's one thing that we did to try to mitigate um, try to mitigate that. Um, and as far as your, your question about, um, you know, the nature of MJO changes, um, other people have done an analysis of, um, you know, the MJO in a future warmer climate and have, you know, found, for example, that, um, you know, in some models, you do get, um, you know, reductions in MJO variance due to, you um, um, you know, less frequent, um, you know, uh, events, um, but, you know, similar strength, for example. Um, we didn't actually do that analysis for the subset of models we looked at. Um, you know, so there's eight models here that we actually, you know, looked at in this multi-model mean analysis. And we didn't, you know, dig into specific, uh, uh, you know, models as far as something like that. But I think it's definitely worth doing. Um, um, you know, to, to get a sense for what is the nature of, you know, variability change in these models. Great. Thanks, Jacqueline. And thanks again, Eric. Yeah. Great talk. Um, I don't see other questions for now on chat or raised hands, Eric. Maybe okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you.